Hello, Monica. Thank you so much for posting this question about anxiety and how we deal with a client who has severe clinical anxiety in a session with horses. Today we will talk about stress and anxiety management uh, with a little overview why it is such a pressing topic right now. As you just said, um, everybody's experiencing anxiety and that's for a reason. And then I will go into general things that we should do and tell our anxiety clients. And then we will talk about some specific things that we can do with the horses. Mm -hmm. All right, so right now um, we have a very critical situation due to the pandemic. Everybody knows that, everybody has experienced anxiety themselves, but um, let's just go quickly through the why. So um, here I have listed some things that contribute to the why. So for example, um, lack of experience. Well, now we are one year into the pandemic, uh, so we should have a little bit more of experience, but now we have the new topic of vaccination and there's so many new rules, uh, things like booking a flight, traveling are so different from what they were before. So this whole lack of experience and not knowing what to do or how something will work is contributing to the overall situation of anxiety that we all experience. Another group of reasons is based in the lack of contact and touch, physical positive touch and also exercise. So we don't shake hands anymore. We don't hug people anymore. Here in South America, where we're used to greeting everybody with a, with a kiss on the cheek, um, it's just like elbow touching or fist touching. That's not a positive touch for most people. And that's really bad because that influences our hormone system. Um, usually positive touch uh, releases positive uh, hormones that are giving us um, a sense of belonging, a sense of happiness, and now we don't have that anymore. I won't go into these, all these uh, biochemical things. Um, if somebody's interested, just send me a note. I have a lot of information about that, but let's keep it to the most practical information here right now. Another thing uh, that contributes to anxiety is the excess of bad news. And of course, on social media, there's a lot of bad news, even news without a lot of sustent. So just everybody is raging about uh, what's going on and that's not healthy for us. The whole situation increases usually um, intrafamiliar problems. So maybe your husband has lost a job, maybe your grandmother is sick, Maybe your kids are not going to school and have to do um, online school right now. All this increases our problems within the family. Sometimes it's just a little, you know, itchiness, but sometimes it's uh, full blown domestic violence that is completely going out of control right now. Uh, kids who don't go to school are exposed to that. Um, people who have lost their jobs are making the situation within their families a lot more difficult and that unfortunately has increased the problem of anxiety, depression and uh, problems within the family a lot. There's a lot of studies right now and especially in low income areas or third world countries, this is the, a really big problem. Um, hand in hand with that goes the economic threat and all the difficulties that we are facing right now. Um, if you have lost a job, or if somebody has lost a job, finding a new one is a bit difficult right now. So all this also contributes to that. And then we have the special problem of the masks. So I'm not um, against face masks. I do think that they are uh, necessary and that they're actually helpful in this situation. But the masks, if we have half of our face covered, um, contributes to a lack of facial recognition. So that's something that we do um, without noticing. It's something that um, our nervous system just does all the time. If you go to the corner to buy bread, uh, you meet people on the street, 
your nervous system automatically scans the faces and determines if somebody is a threat or a neutral or a positive encounter. And now with the face masks, we can't do that. So it's not something that you will probably notice, but um, your facial recognition system that runs in the background all the time is compromised right now. And that contributes to your experience of anxiety. And also with the masks, a lot of people have moments of suffocation. So if you walk a little faster, or if you're biking or doing sports, sometimes you can't breathe really well. So um, if, you, if you have a, um, a need to really deep breathe deeply and you have the mask there, you could come into this feeling of, I don't get enough air. And then you don't feel comfortable taking your mask down. And that gives a shot to your nervous system that says, hyper alert, something is happening. I'm in, in danger. This situation is, uh, is terrible. I can't breathe. I don't know what to do. So even if there's just a very tiny moment of the mask is really uncomfortable and I can't breathe freely, it goes into your nervous system, into an interpretation of danger and alert. So this constant alert through the lack of facial recognition, all the excess of bad news and stress that we have in our homes, plus these moments of suffocation, create a, a constant alert, and that is called hyperarousal. So hyperarousal is something that we need in a moment of danger. For example, if we had to fight a predator in, back in the days of cavemen, or if we have to get out of a, have a car quickly, maybe uh, grab our child and get it out of the car because there is danger, or if we have to run from a threat, we need that state, but we cannot deal with it constantly. So that leads to what is called chronic threat response. And that is something very similar to post-traumatic stress. So this is why the constant situation that we are living right now is so detrimental to our mental health and creates a lot of situations of anxiety and constant threat response, which is very similar to what people experience after a severe trauma. And that's what we are facing. Our clients show symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder even though they didn't have a traumatic event, they are just living under a chronic threat. So um, that's kind of our introduction here. That's why everything is so complicated right now.